Good morning. I want to welcome you out to Haven Rock. This is our live stream of our service. Uh, hey, as the Spirit would have it, we're not gathered together physically, but we are gathered and connected together through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So stand up with us and sing. We're going to sing some songs praising God, raise the roof in your house, and give glory to God during this time. Amen.
Wait. 
start off with a scripture reading. You can turn over to Philippians chapter 4. That is Philippians chapter 4. Uh, you know, we point 2020 as the year of growth. Uh, definitely looking forward to how God can use this opportunity to help us grow spiritually and grow in our faith. So uh, let's take a moment and read a passage, and then we'll talk about uh, the current state of affairs. So in Philippians chapter 4, we're going to start in verse 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. In the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of all peace will be with you. A great passage to uh, continue our worship service, just to remind us to keep our mind on what is good and what is noble and what is lovely. Uh, in addition to that, to go to God with all uh, our requests, to anything that is bringing anxiety to us. But this is more than just an opportunity to be anxious with the coronavirus. It's an opportunity for us to grow in our faith and see what God is doing to help us love other people. Uh, this is a great opportunity for the gospel to spread. This is a great opportunity for us to grow in our relationships with one another. Uh, this Wednesday, what we'll be doing is we'll be having a conference call for prayer. So we'll send more information out that through the text and email. So it's very important that you're attentive to all the updates as things change and as we plan to encourage everybody's faith through this time. So that, that again, more information will be sent out this week about how we can pray together. We want to encourage everybody to use your discretion, but to still really maintain all those and strengthen all the relationships that we have. It's still great to go and study the Bible with people. It is still great to uh, take the time to encourage brothers and sisters, to visit brothers and sisters, even if you need to do it virtually. Uh, even if you need to use your phone and do FaceTime, it's still a great way to stay connected throughout everything we're going through. Uh, last, but the uh, last uh, couple of announcements we want to make is we want to make sure to remind everybody to go and pick up uh, communion uh, so that you can you know, purchase that and then take that each weekend as we continue our services through Facebook Live. All you have to do is buy crackers with unleavened bread and, and get some grape juice, probably uh, some of the only things that will not be sold out in the grocery store here. So you shouldn't have trouble picking those up. Uh, we also want to make sure you continue giving online. Uh, so we want to make sure that you uh, go to our website and continue our giving that way. That way we continue to honor God in that way. Uh, other than that, we will move forward with a, a continuing a great worship service. And let's begin to think of all the possibilities of how God, our great creator, will create a new path for us during this time. Amen. We'll close out in a prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this time. Uh, thank you that you are wise that you are loving, that you are gracious, and that you are powerful. Thank you that you're going to direct all the leaders of all the countries like a water course, Father. Father, you'll give them the wisdom to stop the virus. You'll grant the wisdom to find the cure. You'll grant the wisdom for us to make the most of the time that we have finding a new normal. Father, you'll help us not overreact, and not underreact. You'll help us respond with faith and not fear. You'll guide us through this time that it can be a time where we bring you glory. Father, we pray that you have mercy on everyone's health, everyone that you've created. But Father, we also pray a special prayer for anybody that's battling illness. Father, that you have mercy on them and that you heal them and that you restore them. Father, we know you are the healer and we know only you can grant that. Father, we thank you for your unconditional love and your compassion on us during this time. We pray that you respond to us in the most compassionate way according to your will. And we pray all this in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
You don't have to have a virus to go through strange times. If you're a parent, if you got your little boo-boo and your boo-boo's six months, boo-boo's a year, boo-boo's the smartest, brightest child ever at, you know, at two, three years old. You know, man, you have the most spiritual child ever at four, like, man, little Joey is the most spiritual child ever. He loves to pray. He just loves to serve. And then they go through puberty. That's a strange time. <laughs> Teenage years is strange for you, it's strange for them, it will make you lose your mind. You be singing DMX up in your house. <laughs> oh, that made me lose my mind. <laughs> but you don't know what that is, just too young, all right? You're married for a while, man, you've gone through different challenges, your spouse goes through menopause, or as I call it, men will pause. <laughs> Because it will drop a grown man. A grown man will cry on the couch because of menopause. It will make you cry, all right? <laughs> what a strange time. What an unusual time for family. We go through unique challenges in our life, unique stages of life, right? We talked about death. We, first time a, a loved one passed away than you're supposed to. Or you, you bury a parent. You're taking care of a parent. It's not just that it's hard. It's like, I've never been here before. Right. I've never done this before. I never thought about, I remember my mom got dementia. I, I never thought about the possibility of my mom not being alive but not being my mom. It was like, it just wasn't hard. It was like, God, what is going on here? How do I wrap my brain to even think about this? Strange times. We go through them. But if we can keep our faith, right? Amen. And keep our joy and keep our perspective, these will be some of those powerful times of our lives. Mm. I'm gonna read a passage over in Romans chapter, I mean Acts chapter 8. I got Romans on the brain here. But over in verse 1, it says, On that day a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off men and women and put them in prison. Now, if you got the PowerPoint that comes with this, you can follow along on, on the PowerPoint. But that's Acts 8, verses 1 to 3. And the context is Stephen, who was a spiritual man, full of the spirit, one of the first deacons in the church, had preached a phenomenal message to a group of Jewish leaders. And it went great, but there was a cost to his conviction. They didn't like his message, and they stoned him. And he died being the first martyr in the church. And Saul, who would later on become the apostle Paul, was there egging it all on, giving approval to killing Stephen. You know, Saul's a great example that God can change anybody, right? So it goes on here that after Stephen was killed, a great persecution on the church broke out, and people were going from house to house dragging off Christians, dragging off disciples. Can you imagine if all, out of nowhere a great persecution broke out against Christians in America? And one day it's safe to be a Christian, the next day if, if you're caught being a Christian, you could be arrested, dragged out your house, you could lose your life, you could be fired from your job. Like, this was not just a hard time, it was unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the fear that broke out? It just wasn't difficult, it's like, well, I never thought about the possibility of losing my, my, my home, losing my livelihood. Losing a loved one, losing my life because of what I believe. Mm. And, and, the, and the church in Jerusalem, which had been growing and seeing success and growing more and more, it says they were scattered, they were running for their lives. And all with the apostles, they, they, they were fleeing the city, trying to escape the persecution. 
strange times. And it said, but, Paul, but Saul and the, the people opposing the church set out to do what they set out to destroy the church. And the truth is, it seemed like they were winning, right? If I'm dragging you off, I'm arresting you, and I make you run, I scatter the church, and now the, the church of thousands is, is, is fleeing the city, I'm sure the people opposing God thought, we got them now. Mm. This is over. We won. We, we have destroyed the church. We have broken the church apart, and we're going to hunt them down one by one. Wow. But God had other plans. Yeah. See, in the midst of strange times, in the midst of overwhelming challenges, there's God's plan. Amen. Amen. And God has a plan. We'll keep on beating. It didn't stop at verse 3. We'll start picking up at verse 4. It says, those who have been scattered preach the word wherever they went. Doesn't say they complained wherever they went. Doesn't say they, they hid wherever they went. It says they preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to the city in Samaria and proclaimed Christ there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the miraculous signs he did, they all paid close attention to what he said. With shrieks, evil spirits came out of many, and many paralytics and cripples were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Satan wants to use the things that happen now to destroy us. That's true. But God has a plan. You know what God's plan was for the church from the very beginning? Write this down. Read it for yourself. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. He told, he commanded his disciples to go to what? Around the block, right? To go down the corner. He says, go to all nations. Not just people that look like you, right? So I want you to go to all nations and make disciples. And after you taught them how to be disciples, you baptize them. <laughs> that was God's plan. He repeated that plan in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He says, Look, I want you to, to preach the gospel to the whole world, starting in Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria, and to the whole world. And so the church had, was given a plan to start from where they were and proclaim to the whole world. You know what had happened? They stayed in Jerusalem. And the church stayed in the safety and comfort. And the church was growing and more and more people were becoming disciples. But only in Jerusalem. And only people who were like them. Mm. Jews were making disciples of other Jews and baptizing Jews in Jerusalem. Now, the commission was all nations. The commission was you start where you are, and then you, can, then you go to Judea, and then you go to Samaria, who, who aren't like you, by the way, and then to the whole world. But the church stayed and prospered in Jerusalem. And Satan said, well, we're going to destroy this church, and all he managed to do was scatter. But rather than to hide, they preached the gospel where they went. And rather than being the thing that destroyed the church, it made it grow. Mm. And they spread out and proclaimed the gospel to the whole world. Wow. So here, we, the church starts in Samaria. Later on in the same chapter, uh, uh, Philip meets an Ethiopian unit. And, and that unit becomes a disciple and just spreads it to Ethiopia. And then a church gets started in Antioch. And the church gets moved to the whole known world. Because... It was scattered. Mm. And the very thing that Satan wanted to use to destroy the church, God used to build the church. Amen. That makes sense to you? Yes. He said, what's that God do with me? That's a good question. Well, that's yes. Everything. Wow. Yeah, there's a coronavirus. I don't know all of what that means. But I know that the biggest challenges in my life have not been this, at least not yet. Here are going to financial challenges, to relationship challenges, 
marriage challenge, there's kids challenge, there's health challenge, all sorts of challenges, right? right. And with the, this challenge of school, look, look, if you're single, there's a challenge of being single. I mean, how are you going to find somebody? If you're married, the, you're like, did I find somebody too fast? Can I trade them in for, for a better model? If you don't have kids, you're praying for to God to give you kids. If you have kids, you're praying to God to take them back. <laughs> yeah, it is not messed up. Kids complain that the parents are crazy. Parents say, you, you want to make me crazy. Before I had kids, I had hair. You see me now, right? <laughs> Y'all did this to me. <laughs> we go through stuff. The shine wanted me to remember is true. The, the biggest virus in our lives is not coronavirus. It's sin. It's doubt. It's fear. It's anger. It's pity and bitterness. It's, it's sin that Satan wants to destroy us. But the very challenges in your life that Satan wants to break your family down, break you down, it can drive you to your knees mm -hmm. and drive you to the cross and drive you in the word. And it can be the thing that builds your life up. And when the blessings come, you can say, those blessings would not have come if I had not been scared. without those hard times. Mm -hmm. right. And the unknown blessing would not happen without that unknown feeling that God helped me overcome. Mm -hmm. Man, let me tell you something. Be prepared. Look, get the corral, right? Do all the things that the, the, the saying to do. But we've got to be the people who are not afraid. Man. And we've got to know not only is it a time for, for God to overcome things in our life, it's also a time for God's people to shine as people are going crazy or panicky or whatever. This is the time to share the gospel. Amen. Share the gospel. We live in a great time where, you, where we, we can stay about people face to face, on phone, on Skype. It's a time to, be, to stay connected as disciples. Mm -hmm. Don't you dare. Just be by yourself in your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Man, reach out to the disciples so you can be strengthened. Reach out to other people so you can strengthen them. Amen. That's right. This is a time to serve people. This is a time to love on people, to check up on people in your physical family and your spiritual family. And it's also a time to reach outside of our family to people who are hurting, who are afraid, who are isolated, and let them know that they are loved by us and more importantly, by God. Amen. And it could be a phenomenal time of church growth. I think even this Facebook Live church thing, the truth of the matter is the church has not properly taken advantage of the internet age. It's going to force us to have more of an online presence. Look, share it with your friends. Share your faith differently now. And when we come back together physically, hopefully we'll be far more advanced at using this to build the church. Amen. Because I think God is scaring us to make us flex other muscles. Right? Amen. Because wow. I think God had a plan, for, God has a plan for us too. Amen. A plan to grow the church and it's involved some things that we haven't been doing. Right. I haven't done a great job of. When you scatter seed in full of soil, it grows. The challenge right now is there are so many voices. Now I tell you what, I, I, I watch sports primarily because I want to escape from life. I, I don't, my wife will go home and she'll watch stuff that's, like she'll watch HGTV, which is fine, right? But then she'll watch like murder mysteries and people killing the, the, killing the husbands. And <laughs> you know, I'm like, look, hold up, man. I want sports because sports is an escape, right?
right? Now I turn on sports, they're talking about the virus. And I'm like, is this CNN? Right? And that's what's going on around us. Are we going to let the tears down? Mm. Or are we going to be the light in the darkness? Amen. Are we going to let bring in fear? Or are we going to be the faith that makes a difference? Satan wants to destroy your family. Mm. Satan wants to destroy your faith. Satan wants to depress you. That why has all this happened to me? Or why is my school closed? Why, why is this happening? And God wants to bless you in a blessing that you have not seen yet. But to see the unseen blessing, you have got to overcome the unknown fear. Amen. Right. Let's decide today that we will trust God. That we will preach the word of God wherever we go. And we will use every means in our disposal to allow God to build us up, to build one another up, and to reach out to people who are hurting and afraid. Amen. This Wednesday, we're having a, a prayer time for our church. And we'll send out a call-in number. We can call it. We can pray together. We can share with each other. And I want to encourage all of us not only to be present at the prayer time Wednesday at 7 p.m. We'll send, we'll send the links out. But to invite a friend. Amen. To invite a friend. To pray with us during this time. To pray with us during this time. And we're not going to pray wimpy, fearful prayers. We're going to pray bold prayers to shake the room. Amen. And shape the connection because our God is not on break. Our God is not on leave. Right. These things that are unknown to the world are not unknown to him. Amen. And we serve a God who's in control. And we'll use these things to build us up and to raise us up. To God be the Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to take communion together. And after communion, that's the conclusion of my service. I'm going to pray for communion. If you have communion at home, uh, take the unleavened cracker, which represents the body of Christ that was crucified for us, and then drink the fruit of the vine, which represents the blood that was shed for us. Let's pray and take communion this time. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for loving us the way you do. Thank you for your grace and your mercy and your compassion to God. Thank you for sending your Son to die for us. Thank you, you don't treat us as we deserve, Heavenly Father to God. You treat us through your grace. And our trust during these times and in every time is in your grace. Father, we pray and take this bread that represents the body that was slain for us and drink this fruit of the vine which represents that blood that was shed. That we remember who you are and put our faith in you and allow you to build us up even as Satan is trying to scatter. Father, we pray all this in your name and for your son, our Lord Jesus Christ.